Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slide Lens, we're gonna show you how shutter speed controls water when you're shooting time lapse. So let's get started and see what we can do. Have you signed up to win one of these Tamron lenses, a 90 millimeter or 85 millimeter? Go to theslendlens.com and win one today. We set up a mannequin with an umbrella in our backyard here so we can show how shutter speed controls water when you're doing time lapse. We wanted to get in close, be able to show the drops of water, really illustrate this principle. So you've got a nice tight shot of this umbrella, rain coming down, and we're going to change our shutter speed and just see how that affects the water when we're shooting our time lapse. For our rain shot in the backyard with our mannequin, we're controlling our time lapse with our Syrup Genie Mini. It is not very hard to get a short shutter speed when you're outside working and shooting your time lapse. But if you want a long shutter speed, that's very difficult or impossible to do unless you use a variable ND filter. Syrup makes a great variable ND filter. It's a nine stop ND filter. I usually get mine at 82. I mean, all of my other lenses, 82 and lower, and then I just use step down rings to be able to step them down to my different lenses. So there's my 82 millimeter variable ND filter from Syrup. That's how I'm gonna get those long shutter speeds to really blur the motion of the water when we're shooting our time lapse. So let's take a look at a still image at that fast shutter speed. Our camera settings are 640 ISO. I push that just a little bit so I can get 1 2500th of a second and f2.8. So let's take a look at a time lapse shooting at that fast shutter speed. I do have my ND filter on even though I'm going for a short shutter speed. But I want consistency for my two examples. I've dialed down to minus one stop so I can get a nice short shutter speed but still have the consistency between the two examples. So the water is very frozen and defined. It doesn't look fluid like water at all. It looks more like snow than it looks like water. It's just kind of droplets. Every droplet is frozen in place. Now there's a time when that may look wonderful. If you want your water to really look angry and to have a lot of action with it, then this might be the way to go. So there's our example at that fast shutter speed. Now let's look at a single frame with a longer shutter speed. I'm gonna put my ISO at 100. I'm gonna to go to still 2.8 at 1 20th of a second and then using my ND filter, I'm gonna turn the ND filter to eight stops of ND so I can really let that shutter be longer. That still image shows a lot of motion. The water's blurring into the shot. It's just blurring on top of itself and it just looks fabulous as a single shot. Now let's look at that when we turn it into a time lapse. We shot all of our images using that Syrup Genie Mini at one second intervals. This almost looks like video more than time lapse. You get that motion of the water. That's what video is built on, is that each frame blurs into the next frame. Well, that's what we're getting with this time lapse, is it blurs from one frame to the next. So how does that relate to shooting on location someplace other than in your backyard? To illustrate this principle, we went out on location to two different fountains here in Los Angeles. We went down to Echo Park. It's got a fountain that just shoots straight up. It's pretty powerful and pretty strong. And we shot our examples both at a short shutter speed and then at a long shutter speed to show you how that water looks differently with those two examples. So let's talk about how our cameras are set up here as we talk about shutter speed in relationship to water doing time lapse. I played around with some longer and shorter shutter speeds just to see what they look like. Just give us an idea of exactly how we can control the water with our shutter speed. If you're doing time lapse, you really need an ND filter. As the sun goes down and it gets darker, then you can get those long exposures without an ND filter. But during the daytime, you gotta have one. Having a constant water source like this fountain allows you to decide whether you want it to be dreamy and fluid or short and choppy. You make that decision as you set it for your time lapse. My experience at Echo Park was that the water definitely looks better with that longer shutter speed because it blurs a little bit and a little more choppy with the shorter shutter speed. But the example is not dramatic. It's not like when you have a river and that running water will look really fluid. In this fountain example, we didn't get really the exciting difference we wanted to. So we headed out to a different fountain. We went down to San Pedro. They have a fabulous fountain. It's done by the same designer who did the Bellagio in Vegas. They play it to music every evening and we shot some time lapse there. I decided to give my camera a little bit of movement so we did a one axis movement. One camera on the Syrup Genie, one camera on the Syrup Mini. Now remember, time lapse is about speeding up things that are going slow or making things go faster. Well, this fountain was already going pretty fast so our examples go even faster when we shoot the time lapse. But you can see as it got later in the night exactly how this principle worked. Our water was very fluid with that longer exposure and it was a lot choppier when we started using shorter exposures, which is all fabulous. Hopefully as we're shooting these lessons on time lapse, you'll begin to realize that 
You make a lot of decisions as you set up your time lapse. You decide on shutter speed, you decide on aperture, decide on ISO. There's not a right or a wrong in this experience. It's just a matter of you need to know and make a decision when you're shooting water, what do you want it to look like? Do you want it to be more fluid and dreamy or do you want it to be more choppy and angry? And that's a decision you have to make. The tool to get you there is definitely an ND filter. If you want motion with water, you're going to need an ND filter to give you a longer exposure. So it has been great to be down here in Echo Park where we take a look at how shutter speed affects water when you're shooting time lapse. So get out there, shoot some of your own time lapse, put it up on our Facebook group. We'd like to take a look at what you're doing. So keep those cameras rolling, keep on clicking. If you're going to grow in your business, you gotta get some help. You gotta get help from mentors and people who can help you grow. I can do that for you. Go to thesunlens.com, sign up for our business material. It'll help change your life. You can sit and think about business or you can do something about it and it's time to do it. This is our latest subscriber on the side of lands. He's really a great guy. A little wooden, but not so bad to hang out with. Certainly doesn't compete with you in conversation. Subscribe to the Silent Lens.